Hello team. Molly here. What you're craving. So I was supposed to go and upload. I mean, this is a great, my, my friend Randy and I did this incredible, incredible podcast last week that I can't wait for you to hear. And I was about to upload it so that y'all could hear it next week. And I, it, there's just been all of this really sitting on me that I wanted to talk about. Um, and I was like, oh, we'll like save it till January. But then I'm like, why should I save it till January? I'll probably have something else to say in January. I mean, that's my stuff. But I wanted to talk. I, so I did anyway. I just decided right now in this minute that I'm going to do a solo podcast. Why not? I have a few things I want to say. And, you know, they're very coachy, but like in the best way possible, because I'm having like such an issue with the holiday time and with, with diet culture and with coaching culture. So listen, I, so I want to talk it through with you. I want to give you some solutions. I want to give you some things that I'm thinking about because I don't know, my Instagram feed is just full of like this phrase, survive the holidays. And then it's saying like, survive the holiday survival guide. And, you know, listen, I'm, I'm as marketing as the next, you know, when they teach us to market, they say, find your consumer's pain point. Yeah, I get that. But I feel like there's a difference between like finding our pain point and manifesting our pain point, you know, like, so while I'm reading this, survive the holiday season, survive the holiday season. I mean, let me tell you something. You got to put your thinking cap on here to say diet culture, coaching culture, the money making off of our pain culture is saying survive the holiday season, probably not setting us up for that much success <laughs> because what the fluff are they going to sell us Jan 1. Jan 1 is the most dangerous day of, and I don't say this to scare you, I say this to inform you as your bestie, but Jan 1 is the most dangerous day for most of us in that diet drama and trauma situation because we're so oriented to that reset, start over. And you can reel back in the What You're Craving podcast. I do a really great um, podcast on dialectical abstinence and I'll talk a little bit about it today, I think. I don't even have any notes in front of me. I just knew I needed to talk to you all about this. So I'm watching this survive the holiday and I'm I'm really thinking about, well, that idea that thoughts become things, which I only half agree with, right? I think repeated thoughts become things. Random thoughts don't become things. If you have a negative thought, you don't have to believe it, right? You can be like, oh, wow, what a negative thought. But if we continuously think and believe the things that come into our head, that's actually how beliefs are formed. They're repeated, repeated thoughts. So if I'm walking around during the holiday season with my goal to be surviving it, this is just what I understand about the numbers game in general. This is what I understand about the athletic game. When an athlete says, you know, I'm going to go for the gold, I think there's a large part of them that believes they're going to get the gold. And then there's a part of them that's like, at least I'll die trying getting the gold. If I get the silver, at least I tried to get the gold, right? So if we're sitting here and our desired end point, is surviving the holidays? I mean, my friends, what is life about if we're trying to survive? My teacher, I've been listening to my teacher. Her name is Carol, one of my teachers. Her name is Carolyn Mays. And I've been listening to one of her talks really on repeat. And she talks a lot about gratitude and how gratitude is really, really hard when life is really hard. But she really says this part about gratitude in our lives, which is we're saying that we're going to make the best of our life. That's that's our aspiration is that we're going to make the best of it. Like, no, level up. And so I would suggest the same to you. If you have a coach or you have a program that's helping you to survive the holidays, level up. 
you know, level up. And I think I've just encountered in the last few weeks, a lot of people who have been at the mercy of diet culture, you know, coming to me to, to get some counsel and their answer to the problem is to push themselves harder, to restrict more things, to push themselves and push themselves. Like when things aren't working to sort of try harder, push harder, punish more. By the way, that's very consistent with surviving, isn't it? And my suggestion across the board has been to be curious and to sort of question it. I'll give you an example. I was coaching uh, one of my clients this morning and, you know, when I first met her, she was saying to me, like, you know, I probably just need to, like, really get those meals tight. And one of the things that was happening for her is that she was having a really hard time eating lunch because she's really busy. Now, listen, in an ideal world, you know, we're all sitting down, taking a deep breath, thanking our food, you know, and like eating a beautiful, nourishing meal. But life gets lifey. And so I said to her, like, hey, why don't you just in order to get it done? Let's get you something that you love to eat. And maybe it's just a bunch of snacky snacks for a meal. Like, who cares? And I think this suggestion of, A, meeting her where she is and not having everything be a punishment. You know, we get into the scenario. And if you want to go read about learned helplessness, it's a really, really interesting thing to think about when you're engaging in getting help for the holidays, when you're engaging in diet culture, when you're engaging in coaching culture, when you're engaging in all of these things, because, you know, we become really immune to help and really used to being beat up. And that's a lot of what learned helplessness. And we're so used to being beat up that we don't actually believe that we can get well. It's why I want you to think about, of course, I want you to think about, you know, thriving during the holidays, you know, finding micro joy and enjoyment during the holidays. I know, I know. And like, even if you don't have family and you're going to be alone during the holidays, like we can find joy in that. I can make anything work. Give me any scenario. I'll make it work with you, you know, or if you have a billion relatives around and you're all sleeping in the same bed together, you know, we can find gratitude and joy in that too. There's just no need to survive. Because when you're aiming for survival, you're probably going to hit below that mark. And boy, does that work well for diet culture. And boy, does that work well for the January 1 vultures to come and get you involved in their stuff too, right? Like, I really want to say this over and over and over again. I want, because many of us have been through so many cycles of diet drama and trauma, when you get that little bit of grace that says, oh, you know what? I may be open to help again. I really want you to be thoughtful about who you're working with, what they're saying. I don't care if you work with me. I care that you're thoughtful about it, who you're working with, what they're selling. Are they selling you to stay with them forever? If that's something that you're looking for, that's great. If it's not, are they helping to empower you to own it, to be in a relationship with food and not a relationship with their program, right? Are they helping you to get self-determination? So the woman this morning said, it's amazing to me that when I started to soften the way that you suggested, how much easier my life became. And I love that, right? When I'm thinking about surviving the holidays, my whole body gets rigid, And if my body's getting rigid, my brain is coming close too. If my body's like, oh my God, survive, then that's going to activate my brain. And guess what? Then my brain's in fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and there's no wisdom available to me. But if I'm thinking of thriving during the holidays, guess what? That opens up this enormous landscape for me to look at the parts of my holiday season and the parts of my life that I can really focus on to bring me joy, to bring me creativity, to bring me happiness, to bring me love. And every single person in their life can find that. As my teacher, Carolyn May says, it's easy to find gratitude at a banquet, right? But finding gratitude in poverty and scarcity is hard. It's really hard and you can do it, but you can only do it if your orientation is that you want to thrive, right? 
Oh, there's such a good intensati. I choose to thrive. I'm glad to be alive. It's such a great uh, intensati mantra. Because here's the other thing. If you're struggling and if the holidays are a time that you historically struggle, that's okay. The first thing I want to say is your recovery is as progressive as relapse. There's so many people. And listen, it's just the kind of the, the way of the world. And I think the way of the sales model, to be honest, where it's like, I am accustomed to failing. And then when I fail, I'm in a relapse and then the relapse get worse, blah, blah, blah. But never do we think of the amount of time, the amount of energy, the amount of work that we've put in to getting well. And like, what bank account that's in? Like, we're all really clear on like, you know, when, if I've been slipping constantly, I'm in really bad shape. See, there we are again. See, I can't get it. But I also want you to think about all the work that you've put in to this relationship with food, this relationship with yourself, this relationship with some kind of recovery, whatever you're listening to. People who hang out with me have usually done a pretty good chunk of work. What bank account is that in? I'm telling you, there is a secret Swiss bank account somewhere in your soul where all of the reading and the connecting and the signing up for the program, it, it, it exists somewhere. And I think, you know, listen, it's not a great sales pitch to remind you of that, right? From other programs. It's like, but it's really, really true. And your recovery, that that recovery bank account, we need to go access it. Like we need to go find it somewhere inside of you because we need to be using those tools during the holiday season. And when Jan, when the vulturous Jan one comes around, right? Because Vulturous, I mean, it's impossible. I mean, that's like being around. Everybody's just going to be talking about what their New Year's resolution is and what cleanse they're doing. And woof, that can get the that can get the healthiest of us jazzed up, right? So we want to be really thinking about what we have internally, what we've succeeded at, using those as markers and measures around what we can do. If you, again, if you're thinking about surviving the holidays, you are selling yourself short. Because that's like, I aim for the gold and I get a bronze. If I'm aiming for surviving, I don't even want to think of the answer to that. I'm just focused on like living my best life whenever I can. And listen, promise you there'll be a podcast coming out soon about some struggles that I've had. And I, listen, I just think that's life. And I think, you know, it's part of my charm, maybe that, you know, I don't know, the other Monday I woke up, woof, I was up at four o'clock in the morning. My, my anxiety decided to wake me up and remind me of all the problems that I had. And it was a really, really dark thing, but I actually remember this part of it because I remember by 10 after eight, I woke up, I took, I went on a really long walk with my dog. I talked on the phone to a bunch of people, cried a little bit, and I felt so different at 10 after eight. So the anxiety had started, that's four hours. In my previous life before recovery, that was four years I would have lost to that, right? So it doesn't, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you're not doing well if you're, if you're experiencing negative feelings. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, what are we focusing on? What is the end point? What is the, what is the guiding principle? Thriving is a, surviving is not a great guiding principle. Thriving is a great guiding principle. And it requires thinking about things slowly. It requires thinking about things in really granular ways. Like I love this idea of micro joy. Thich Nhat Han talks a lot about, I think it's him that says this, that sometimes he takes a vacation when he opens a door. And what he means by that is that he really, really opens the door slowly, mindfully, breathfully, you know, and finds himself having a bit of relief just in that one moment, you know? I think about that when I'm with people that I love, I try to really get slow and take it all in, right? Or even when I'm by myself, sometimes I think what a peaceful moment and micro joys can add up to macro joys. But if you're very committed to not getting well, it's really challenging. It's also really, really easy for the vultures of diet coach culture and coaching culture to come get you. So I'm really, so, and, and, okay. So you're like, okay, Molly, uh, I'm here. I'm here to thrive. I'm born to thrive. I'm glad to be alive. Go in Tensati. What do I do? Well, I, I really want you to, to move your arrow about 70 degrees, aim higher. Let's ask more of yourself. You are so capable. You really are. And there's gonna be a lot of people in this time of year 
trying to win off of your struggle. And I want you to just to see that part of it's like the sale, the sales model, you know, but really take a look at that. Take a look at that. Take a look at who and where, who you're giving your power to and like where you're placing it, how much of it you're giving. I really want you to focus on that. And listen, there's another podcast on what you're craving all about wise mind. And it's really hard sometimes to decipher what is wise mind and what is emotion mind or what is wise mind and what is my anxiety? What is wise mind and what is my addiction? However, you can think about that. And I love this concept of having two or three like guiding principles, like that really can help to help you make decisions when they're tricky that really do support your highest and best self. In my coaching group that I'm doing right now, I started this and it is taken off with gusto. And that's why I wanted to share it with you because I think it's actually such an, like such an easy check-in with yourself and it can really help to inform your next actions and it can really help you to thrive, which is, you know, what I'm here to help you do. I really am. So your guiding principle would be this idea that when you're in a situation and you don't know if it's your, if it's your highest self or your addiction, you don't know if it's your highest self or your emotion mind, you would really run it by these principles. Here are a few that people have. So in my group, one person, one of, one of the guiding principles is optimal health. So, you know, should I go to this party tonight? Is it in alignment with my health? Is it going to help me move towards optimal health? It's a really good question. Should I eat this cookie right now? Is it going to bring me closer to optimal health, right? Should I call back my sister who I have a very tumultuous relationship with? Is it in line with my optimal health? Here are some other ideas for guiding principles. Wisdom. Is it in alignment with my highest wisdom? I'm obsessed with this one. But here are the other ones. The other, these other ones I'm like really, 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 really obsessed with. Alignment. Alignment as a guiding principle. Is this in alignment with who I want to become? Is going to this party in alignment with who I want to become? Is eating this cookie in an alignment with who I want to become? right? Self-prioritization is a really, really good one, right? Because I think one of the things that really does happen around the holidays for those of us who have very full holidays, right? Filled with family and children and demands and demands and demands and demands is that our needs fall to the bottom. And then we are engaging in this less loving behavior of binge eating, over shopping, anger, right? Complaining, complaining is its own addiction, probably should do a pot on that, whatever. So self-prioritization is actually a really, really high level and awesome, awesome guiding principle. You'd say to yourself, you know, is going to this party prioritizing myself and my needs? Is eating this cookie prioritizing myself or my needs? Is calling my sister back prioritizing myself and my needs? It's a good question. I also want to say progress towards perfection. We don't do perfection. We're just working towards it. So like you may say, you know what? Going to this party is a solidly bad idea. You may still go and that's okay. I don't know if you're like me, but boy, do I learn the hard way. I promise you this. I just had this situation happen and it's about the 10 billion time I had the situation happen where I so boldly put my priorities last and I felt it. I felt it on such a cellular level. I really did. I was a, I was a, I was really distraught, but for the first, maybe not for the first time, but as my own healing has come, when I sacrifice myself and above others in an unhealthy way, it hurts differently, which is like the weirdest part of healing, right? That it hurting more is what is promoting the change, right? They say that someone said, 
you know, pain is the touchstone of all of our growth. <laughs> Very rarely do I meet someone who's asking me for help that's saying, oh my God, my life is so amazing, Molly, please come help me, right? Usually it's like, I'm in a lot of pain. What, what can you, how can you help me? So anyway, point being is that when I was talking to my coach about this choice I had made that so deeply deprioritized myself and I was so sad about it and I was angry and I was angry at myself. This is what she said to me. She said, let this be your bottom. Like that's all she said. It was so, it was so brilliant and so loving again, like what my client said to me this morning, you know, when I softened, it was so much better. You know, I thought she was going to give me like a homework assignment and this and that and tell me, yep, you did it again. There you go. You know, and she just said, you know, let this be your bottom. Let this be the final event where you don't ask your wise mind what it should do. Cause that's what ended up happening. I made a very, I said a very reactive yes to something. And it really, really, really sacrificed my myself. And it was such a loving way that she had suggested that to me. And I can only hope I do the same with my clients. And it was like, yeah, you know what? I am going to let this be my bottom. And I want to tell you one more thing in the spirit of the human condition, I'll probably do it again, you know, and so is life. And so is life. So back to our guiding principles. So some ideas, right? Optimal health, wisdom, alignment, self-prioritization, right? And I, I just want to say one more thing, and this is really consistent with the data um, Brene Brown talks about. And I don't know if anybody here has ever read The Artist's Way. It's such a wonderful book that helps us really access our best self. Don't underestimate, you know, especially when we're giving and we're giving and we're giving around the holiday season, if that's what's happening. Don't underestimate the power of creativity, the, the power of, you know, fulfillment, self-fulfillment outside of yourself. Um, and so it's, it's like, I love fulfillment as a guiding principle, thinking to yourself is doing, is going to this party going to help me feel fulfilled. Isn't that great? Is eating this cookie going to help me feel fulfilled? Is calling my sister back going to help me feel fulfilled? It's and I'm not saying like, listen, there's sometimes we have obligations. We have to go do things. I get it. But there's sometimes we really, really don't. And those are the micro moments that can help us to thrive. Right. And, you know, also you can't, you can do everything, but you can't do everything well. And there has to be a time where you consider saying no in the spirit of saying yes to yourself. Right. In the spirit of saying yes to yourself. It's okay. I mean, listen, and it's a wonderful thing. I mean, just even thinking about thoughts become things. I'm committed to thriving this holiday season. That doesn't mean it has to be like rainbows and unicorns anywhere. It just means needs to mean that your headspace and your motivation and even like your hope, you know, I love that Wayne Dwyer, that Wayne Dyer quote that says, you know, when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change. If you're walking around and, and promise you this, if you're walking around and you're spending time with people who are just trying to survive the holidays, it's going to be a big complaint fest. Try to think about, oh, I'm going to thrive during the holidays and then try to find like-minded people who are also trying to thrive. It's real, the five people you spend the most time with, this is research driven. It's so important. It is remarkable, the data around the five people you spend the most time with. So try to be filling your power circle with, I mean, maybe maybe one out of five isn't, it's a non-negotiable. It's just like, hey, you know, this person I'm married to is just negative and I spend a lot of time with them. And so it is, or my coworker or whatever, but the slots that you have that are negotiable, please work on that. Having a power circle, having people who are working on leveling up is such a game changer. I know this very personally, you know, I, I find such gratitude in that the people that I rely on to help me find my wise mind and help me to know my best self are working on theirs too, but also see my best self when I can't see it. So trying to get those kinds of people in your life, you know? But the thing I need you to know most of all is that you are absolutely incredible. And I, and I want you to try to do some work around separating out 
the sales pitch of what is trying to help you to see the problem, you know, they, I forget what they call it in marketing, but it's something like problem Island, like really sell them on the problem. And, and listen, I think all, most sales pitches do that, right? They have to be accessing our pain point. That's what it's called. They have to be accessing our pain point for us to say, oh yeah, you know what? I actually really need that. Like, you know, when I saw this, like, dog collar, I was like, yeah, actually, you know what? We really do struggle with that at our house. That is a pain point that we have. Let me go buy that. But I want us also to start trying to understand that we are not our pain point. We are not our pain point. And you don't have to be it. The problem with diet culture is that if we get out of our pain point, it's not like buying a dog collar. We get out of our pain point, we're out of diet culture. And that's a problem to a multi-billion dollar industry that wants to keep us in it with them, right? You are so much more than this pain point and developing this internal, internal guiding principles, a really strong support network, right? Like really being keyed in to all of that is, is where your strength is and understanding that when we're, if we're talking about a relationship with food maybe a relationship with alcohol, relationship with ourselves, relation, like these are relationships. And so you're not going to do them perfectly. And frankly, it's a wonderful opportunity when you're not doing it perfectly is a wonderful opportunity to learn and grow about how you can enhance the relationship. Isn't that a really different way to look at things? Right. One woman was saying to me the other day, well, it's just, I struggle with breakfast so much. I struggle with breakfast. I struggle with breakfast. I was like, why don't you just stop eating breakfast to start eating at 11? I've never seen more relief on someone's face. I'm like, who told you how to eat breakfast? You do you, boo. And you know what? If that stops working, we'll figure something else out. It's not so critical. What's critical is our, the belief system that we think that we're only worth surviving. You are worth thriving. You're worth thriving plus you miraculous human. So anyway, I want you to really put this somewhere. I'm going to talk more about this. I'll, I'm going to do another solo pod, but I actually want to hear a little bit about what you want, what you want me to be talking about. But let's really try to move our barometer towards thriving. Leave the surviving behind. No, thank you. And start to work on building that internal resource. The guiding principles are going to, so that you're, you know, you're loving yourself enough to be consistent and you're loving yourself enough to check in to see, is this thing that I'm questioning going to bring me closer or not? And it doesn't even mean you have to do the thing that brings you closer. It just means you have to start to know yourself because when you can know yourself, you're not going to sell yourself to the vultures. That's what's really true. And I mean, I'm a huge believer in like when the student is ready, the teacher arrives. So I'm actually a huge believer in like, then when we know ourselves, we start to sort of attract higher level things, blah, 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 blah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it does make sense. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to leave you with two more things, which is I'm obsessed with the, with the practice of intensati. I'm trained in and I'm, and I, and I do it twice a month and intensati is completely about accessing the thing that I'm talking about here. For an hour, you're doing mantras, you're empowering yourself, you're shutting down that negative part of your brain. It's almost impossible to think negatively when you're doing mantras and movement. And I'm sort of prompting you to think about your higher self. It is such a beautiful soul exercise. And it is Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. And I am doing a class at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And I really, really, really want you to think about coming. I really want you to think about coming. And the other thing I want to say is that this breaking up a sugar course that I launched, I think I launched it last year. People are really loving it. And so if you're in a struggle with sugar, this kind of program, it doesn't talk a lot about food. I mean, it certainly does, but it talks a lot about garnering, get, getting your insides together, getting some clarity on your why, getting some clarity on skills and all of this so that we can empower you to break up a sugar. If that's something you're feeling like, you know, is in the way for, and for a lot of us, an unhealthy relationship with sugar is in the way of having, you know, of a, of a, of a big, beautiful life. I'm, I'm certainly one of them. So listen, in conclusion, you're amazing. I need, I think you're amazing. I know you're amazing. We need to be working on getting you 
know, believing and knowing that you are incredible. You are miraculous. I'll hold that truth till you want it. I have a, I have a big shelf. I'll hold it for you, but come get it soon because life is short and I want you to be enjoying your life, thriving your way through life imperfectly, but thriving your way through life. Anyway, I'll see you next week. Love you.